From traditional farming, orchards, vineyards, to greenhouses, aquaponics, hanging gardens, floating gardens, fish, and quadruple production. This is our production for you. Yes, uh, look, look at this one. These are small size peaches and we got like 12 trees last year yeah. when um, it was a hot summer and drought and uh, very hot condition. And we notice but, we're drip irrigating it here. Yes, we're drip irrigating it. All the, I, I just take, take it like three or four of them. It was delicious. Oh my God. Really? Good. I love it. Yes. Yeah. And this one is ready to pick. So I'm going to go ahead and You're gonna pick, pick it? it up. Yes. Okay. All right. And it's of course organic, fresh, nice. Okay. I can just eat it just like this, but you know. All right. Maybe, maybe All I'm right. going to wash it before I do it, but let's see. Take a bite. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Is it good? <laughs> It smells fresh. fresh? You okay. know what? There's nothing like something fresh. What's your your story about food coming right after it's picked? Well, they say the ancient believed that when you go ahead and pick the uh, fruit right off of the branch of a tree, actually there is life force in the uh, fruit, and what you mm. you get more good stuff. Is what you, you get, think? You get that life force yeah okay. now look here what we've got oh we've got a vineyard and really these are little tiny grapes but you know the average grape lives to be over a hundred years old did you know that the average grapevine uh -huh. so we got grape vineyard drip irrigated it goes on here I think we got about a hundred grapevines plus we got hazelnuts plus we got others so we're making progress Growing our own, babe. Yes. You believe in it? Yes, I do believe in it. And right now I got a seed, and what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just store it for the next year. Yeah. And I'm gonna have more of these peach trees. Okay. How do you store them? Do you just keep them cool, dry? Or do you, you know? wash it and you keep it in a you know plastic bag or something? And when it comes to fall, I do. And that's where we have breakfast, right there, a little little breakfast spot. And right over here is our greenhouse. Can we just take a quick look at it? I mean, this is not fancy, but did you know this greenhouse will grow enough food for a family of four? And we're about to add aquaculture to it. Got peppers. We got the plants. We got the flowers. We got the grapes. And here we're going to put in tilapia. And then back here, we got grapes galore. Just grapes everywhere. And this is the seed stock for our orchard. This is where we get our, our plants. And so, I love it. Well, here we are, phase two. You can see this? These are all just plants. And notice we got some flowers going now. You know, they look nice. Beautiful. Beautiful. Nothing like flowers. Got some rose stuff planted, traditional. And look at these grapes, man. They're just everywhere. Look at this. This thing is just loaded with grapes. Look at this. Isn't it amazing? So this will be the beginning of a replacement orchard for next year. And we're coming along here. And here we've got more flowers. But you see how simple it is? Nothing much to it. And then here, we just have a, behind these strawberries, just a vacant space here. So let's see what happens next. I'm Adam Cohen, Green Phoenix Farms. I do custom aquaponic design and sustainable farming in the urban environment. What got you interested in, in, in this? A lot of things. Uh, trying to find a way to produce healthy food, nutritious food, sustainably for my family, cutting, wanting to cut costs and save a, save a buck here or there. Yeah, I want to ask you a question. USDA says the typical greenhouse produces $7 per year per square foot of greenhouse area in food. That's the average. What would you say uh, using the aquaponics would produce per square foot a year, just a guesstimate? I can say that from personal experience, 
my soil garden compared to my aquaponics garden, I get twice at least, I get twice the production out of my aquaponics that I do out of my soil. My growth rates are through the roof, two to three to ten times what I get in soil. So if, if USDA says you get seven dollars a square foot in a greenhouse traditional, I'd be betting at least double that with aquaponics. And it sounds like double that would be conservative from what you're saying, Probably. right? Probably. Now, uh, we're looking here at a, at a greenhouse and, and we're in sort of planting stage. And uh, I, I want to tell me what what your idea here is we're going to do for this, this greenhouse. It's a small greenhouse, but we could produce enough here to feed a family or two, couldn't we? Oh, easily. Uh, I generally say that from one of my small systems that'll fit in a a six foot cube, six foot by six foot ground footprint, uh -huh. you can feed a family of four salad three times a week and fish once a week. So in a greenhouse this size, you can easily feed a small family. What we were talking about was actually taking this corner back here, yeah. about a 10 foot by 15 foot segment, yeah. and putting in probably a four to 500 gallon fish tank, uh, and probably an equal amount of uh, Gallon, gallons for, for grow space uh -huh. to fill up the rest of the space uh -huh. and be able to grow tomatoes, cucumbers, melons, pretty much anything that, that's possible, even and, trying some berries. And then we're going to have multi-level, so we'll have hanging things that can drip down into it. So you'll have, you'll have your fish, you'll have your, your artificial beds, mm -hmm. you'll have your hanging things. Mm -hmm. Is it possible that you could actually, if you wanted to, overflow some of this to use for irrigation, say for ground planting? Absolutely. And the, the nutrient-rich water from the aquaponics with all the, the nutrients that have been brought back into the environment from the fish waste, that water will help your, your ground plantings go just through the roof. Yeah. You do consulting and you help build these things and you're doing this actually in, uh, all over. Mm -hmm. what, how, if someone wanted to talk to you or contact you, how would the be the best way for them to do best that? way to get a hold of me is through my website, www.greenphoenixfarms.com. Uh, just search for Adam Cohen uh, Aquaponics in Dallas, Texas. Will pop up in the in the search engines. But go on there, leave me a comment, send me a contact info, and I'll be back with you back to you in a couple of days. I've got a deep question now for you. Okay. There are a lot of people that believe that our agricultural philosophy, our system, has been too centralized and maybe uh, may even be unhealthy in some ways. Uh, it appears to me that what you're doing, the creativity, the greenhouse, the uh, aquaponics, the multi-layer thing, is a revolutionary idea for our food. Uh, t what are your th thoughts on that? Yeah, that is a deep question. Uh, I think that overall we've gotten too used to being to doing just what we're told and I think that in the end we need to get back to doing what our our grandparents and and their parents did we need to produce our own food we need to do what we can to be self-sufficient I think we've gotten too dependent on other people yeah. so I, we just need to start doing it for ourselves I see concentrations of agricultural for example in West Texas California Arizona that are all multi, uh, excuse me, they're all single type crop systems. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, but I look at people like yourself who are doing these things and they're taking a multiplicity of crops, but their productivity is, like you said, two, three, four, sometimes 10 times. When you that. look at, when you look at a forest, yeah. when you look at a coral reef, when you look at any natural ecosystem, there is never an overabundance of any one thing. Yeah. Nature likes a balance. And that's what aquaponics does, that's what the natural environment does, yeah. is it uses the strengths of the individual to create a stronger whole. Yeah. So by growing multiple crops, by growing tomatoes with peppers, with squash, with okra, with everything else, the pests don't have, a t have any need to congregate and decimate the entire crop because there's not enough really there to send that population out of control. I see. The pests of one are controlled by something that's attracted by the other. Have you seen the nutrition studies? I've heard that our protein, our vitamin, our nutrient levels in our vegetable crops are down 40% over the last 20 years in the mm -hmm. United States. Uh, would aquaponics, would you think you'd have a higher nutrition level in this kind of growth? Yeah, it, that's a guarantee. Uh, there was a, a TED talk done uh, at TEDx Manhattan about a year ago that actually showed conclusive evidence that nutrient rich foods and so forth are what we need to cure most of our, our medical ailments. Mm. 
what happens with aquaponics is we are producing nutrient dense foods yeah. in an extremely productive and and obtainable manner. Yeah. This this food is is what we need yeah. to save our to save our our health. I had some guests here in Texas from Tibet. And they went to the grocery stores and they cooked and they they wouldn't go out to restaurants at all. They wanted to cook their own foods. But they told me again and again that our foods in the United States were substandard. And I grew up thinking we had superior foods. I'd say, no, no, look at these grocery shelves and look at this food. And they'd say, you don't understand. The, just, the essential just we have something a lot of it. is not there, you know. Yeah, just because we have a lot doesn't mean that it's good. <laughs> yeah. Hey, thank you so much. We appreciate Absolutely. what you're doing, my friend. Maybe this site. Yep. Okay, I think we're done. Here we go. Everything's set up. The fish will be in here. Controlled by solar panels. We put this here to provide some shade for the fish because it gets very hot here. We thought it might heat the water too much. The water is pumped from here to here to aerate the water and fill up the tanks. We tried a tank to tank gravity system, but it caused too many small leaks and it was just too hard to get it right. And so we went ahead and did it this way. Each one has got a automatic natural vacuum flusher to empty the tanks. Here's what we can tell this system takes it about an hour or two to fill up the tanks and then they flush and then we're done for the day. Flush water goes in here. We've created little thingies, little pots. Look in there and you can see water, maybe. And this is just for fun. By the time the water gets back to here, notice this one gives most got little things again to aerate the water a little bit. And this sump tank, I think we're going to put shrimp or something in this tilapia in this. A little while we'll turn it on. I love this time of day. The sun's getting ready to come up. You can see a little pink on the horizon. Hear the birds singing. There's the old swamp monkey. See the greenhouse. See the wind turbine going. A little red tractor, other greenhouse, great vineyard over there. I don't know if you can make it out or not, but it's there. A little breakfast nook where I can watch the sun come up in the mornings. Well, let's go inside and see what we got. A pretty good wind.
fresh mint coming up. Over there we got a beautiful grapevine that's just loaded with grapes. I don't know, you can't see them, but they're there. Tomatoes are blooming. This is our aquaponics. We're going to plant all this probably today. Our floating beds, the way you water them, very simple. Just keep that. And see, they're watering from underneath. This is our salad plate. We've got uh, two kinds of lettuce and some other greeny, spicy thingies. Can't see them, but they're there. We got fish in here. All powered by solar. I appreciate our country. It gives us these kinds of opportunities to do things that we can teach other people how to feed themselves. We're showing in this little experimental greenhouse how that you can grow cactus to tomatoes, flowers to exotics. This is an orange tree, believe it or not. and do it all green. No impact on the environment. Now we had this as drip irrigation, but we're practically minded and sometimes using recycled water here works just as good as drip. We hated to admit that, but it's true. Another solar, another, this is a water recapture system, it creates a supply of fresh rainwater. Sometimes we like to drink fresh rainwater and sometimes we like for the uh, plants to have it. It's always nice to have a little backup supply of rainwater, although there it comes, the sun. Promise of a new day. In every society, the coming of the sun was a blessing. Good time to pray. There you go. Oh yeah, he says, hey, not bad. Oh. 